If you've clicked on this video, it's probably because you're looking for a PC build and maybe even found one you like. You've got limited knowledge on PC hardware and therefore rely on other people suggesting you the build. Well, just stop for a second. There's definitely a few things you should know before pulling the trigger, so let's cover that. Greetings everyone, my name is Proto and today I'm going to be telling you the tips of the trade for PC build guides on YouTube. This can save you a lot of money, headaches and disappointment. I want to preface this by saying that if you're an avid builder or you've done this before, this video won't help you. It genuinely just won't. This is really just beneficial for those looking to build a PC showcased in a YouTube video or article. Starting with time, when was the build or video made? The way I make my build guides is that I imagine I have a certain budget for the components and then decide on how I'd best spend that money, at that time of course. Now I can't control the market though, over time components will either be unavailable for purchase due to being discontinued, or the price can massively jump up. Either way, I don't know if or when this will happen. With that in mind, if a video is fairly recent, let's say within the last 3 months, you're probably fine. If any older than that, don't be surprised if the price of the components fluctuates massively. Currently in 2017, DDR4 prices have done just that, from doubling to tripling in price. It's a pain in the arse, but you can often find and replace it with a similar component that hasn't inflated. I'll give you an example. In July's dedicated streaming PC, the, the Ryzen one, the RAM was available for $130. Skip forward four months later, and that RAM has jumped up to $190. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Now, simply click on the edit this parts list and cross off the memory. If you've noticed the specs beforehand, you'll see that we had 2 8GB modules for a total of 16GB of RAM at a frequency of 3000MHz, but that's not too important. Anyway, click on choose memory and make sure compatibility filter is checked. Scroll down to select the specific details of what you want. In this case, we do want 16 gigs of RAM. Now, this will change depending on the component, but RAM, as long as it has the same specs, doesn't really change across the different manufacturers. And so in this case, we'll sort it by price. This Crucial Ballistic Sport RAM is at a similar speed and doesn't look half bad. It also just saved us $30, which we can use elsewhere. Alongside an increase in price of some components is also how relevant they are. Whilst innovation hardware such as RAM, storage, power supplies, and things of that nature typically don't vary much over the years, CPUs and GPUs definitely do. What I mean by this is that you could go back 3 years and buy the same hard drive I recommended back then and you'd be golden, but the same just wouldn't hold true for graphics cards and processors. That's not to say 3 year old tech is unusable, but it just means that it's outdated and therefore you might be missing out on performance and features that will cost you either the same amount or less. Take a look at the newest generation and the price disparity between the components. Newer CPUs typically have more cores or a higher single core performance for the same price, and otherwise there'd be no incentive for people to upgrade. The same applies if you're buying graphics cards. For sake of argument, I'm going to go and compare two cards one generation apart, the GTX 980 Ti and the GTX 1070, both from Nvidia. Now the GTX 980 Ti came out in June 2015 and gave you a massive amount of performance for your money with a hefty price tag of $650. Skip forward one year later and you could buy a GTX 1070 for only $380, so almost $300 less, with roughly the same performance but with a lower power draw, more VRAM and support for newer technologies. My point is that it makes sense to ask around and do some research on the newest hardware available and see how your build looks compared to the money that you're spending on it. Now I suppose this leads on to the question of should I wait for generation XYZ to be released and truth be told that's all up to you. It makes sense to wait if you're only a few months away but going a long time without gaming because you want that extra performance is nonsensical. New hardware will always be around the corner and when the time comes you'll be saying the same thing to yourself. Make a logical decision on your needs or you'll be waiting forever. Furthermore, let's talk about building the PC and actually getting it off the ground. Both of these things aren't complicated and they're very straightforward, but for some it's a genuine concern. You know, breaking the components, buying products which aren't compatible and so on. In terms of breaking the components, the only way you can really achieve this is by completely disregarding any sense of care when building and just forcing things into places they shouldn't go. It's very difficult to break the components unless you're careless. As for incompatibility, if the person whose build guide you're using knows what they're doing, this isn't going to be a problem. 
If you're still concerned but you don't really understand hardware, put all of the components into a website called PCParPicker.com and enable the compatibility checkbox. Once you've done that, if there's any problems with the build, it should show up at the bottom. You can find more information about choosing parts and understanding them in the card on screen now. After you've built your system, you're going to have to install Windows, followed by the drivers and the games and software, yada yada yada. I've covered that in another video. You should be aware though that you have to do these things. You don't just order the parts and the PC is magically built and operational. I mean, you can pay for services to get your computer built and primed, but those can be expensive and I highly recommend you just do it yourself or with a companion because not only will it save you that extra money, but it doesn't take long and is a really enjoyable experience. Lastly, I understand that this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but just do a little bit of research on what the person says. You can typically suss out whether a person knows what they're talking about and trying to help just by the language that they use. You should definitely avoid build guides or talking heads when they're just listing parts and not explaining the reasoning behind their decisions. With a little research, you can formulate your own parts list that's completely tailored to your own needs. Anyway, hopefully this has cleared some things up before you go looking for a PC build based on other people's recommendation. You'd still be surprised the number of people I get looking to buy a 3 year old system and then complaining when some parts are outdated or the price is spiked. Also, make sure that you're not buying the most expensive versions of components just for the sake of it. Do some digging and see if you can find the same performance for less. One excellent resource I highly recommend is Gamers Nexus. You know, just have a look at some of those benchmarks for graphics cards and pretty much everything else. I've linked their channel down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Back from the dead.